Augusta, Ana, Freire, Fibre, Andrasa, Gonzalez. Gostam disso? Me dão em Gonzalez já. Cabra, Osmar, em Gonzalez. A reality of it is, is there's nobody coming riding in on the right horse to save us. We have to do the work and we gotta love each other. Hello, my name is Lashana thompson Hill, and I am one of the two co-chiefs of the Violence Reduction Unit at the D.C. Office of the Attorney General. So I, along with co-chief Alan James, helped to oversee the six Cure the Streets sites, and I'm excited to be here today to talk to you about NARC, Cure the Streets. NARC is an organization that was started by Irk Weaver and some of his peers, and he is one of the first individuals who decided to take a chance on this model, to decided to get, who decided to get involved with this model. He currently operates three of the six Cure the Streets sites. And I'm just so excited because, like I said, he gave this program a chance when a lot of people were skeptical. This is a public health approach to gun violence prevention, which basically means that it does not involve punishment or blame or and basically when it's a public health approach we treat it the same way that you would treat a disease uh, you isolate that individual treat that individual and try to change those norms within those communities and so this is a new program that came to the district in 2018 after a string of homicides we had a business owner in war 8 who got murdered and there was a couple who was murdered in war 8 and the Attorney General and other council members came together to try to figure out uh, an innovative approach to this problem. And as I said, it's also data driven. And so there's a strong data component to this model where you basically have to track all of the work that you do. And so this is an international model. And for it to come to D.C. for the first time in 2018 was a huge deal for me because as I said, not many people are willing to take a chance on something new and something innovative and different. I 
And that's how I sit about it. I'm all five. Mr. Mob and Blood. So you basically be saying, see these yellow shirts in the neighborhood. This one we out here going, we engaged in the community. Trying to get things done, you know, trying to keep the peace down in the neighborhood. Stuff like that. So. Yeah. 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 Hey man, how y'all doing out there, man? Uh, I'm Cody Wynn, man. You know what I'm saying? A VI for Curtis Streets in the Trinidad neighborhood, man. To give you a little background about my organization, uh, we stopping gun violence and homicides in the uh, War 5 area, in the Trinidad area. You know, man, uh, they got to put these guns down, man. Too many kids getting killed. You know, too much situations uh, going on. It's, it's, that's definitely... Uh, getting out of hand man so we got to uh put these guns down man and we got to man uh, do a better job with everything that's going on right here right now uh you know what i'm saying we ten toes down in the community if you see us out here with these yellow shirts y'all know that's what we doing we out here we making it safe for everybody you me and everybody like that like how we live a lot of nothing going on we gotta do better we gotta do better we gotta do better we killing each other, we hate one another Where's the love, where's the love I say we gotta do better, we gotta do better We gotta do better, we gotta do better We killing each other, we steal from each other We hate one another We gonna stop this violence, man, as you look over here We all about to march and shut the city down I'm telling y'all, man. My name is Antoine. I'm doing the outreach working for War 5, not Curtis Street. So, man, the slogan for 2019 for all you good brothers and mothers, you can tell y'all sons the same thing. Put the guns down and pick the kids up. That's going to be the slogan for 2019 and beyond. That's for anybody. If you can put that gun up, you can pick your kids up. And if you pick your kids up, you ain't going to put that gun down. Because you ain't going to carry them with your kids. That's right. So if you do that, then I know you're going to be safe that day. Kill the streets for North East, South East, South West, North West. We turn these streets. We turn the streets. Put the guns down. Kill the streets. And it was a process of you going and do 10 years of your life for something you ain't do. You come out lost, no job opportunity, no housing. So it's like a convicted felony in my situation like that. I had no other choice but to turn back to the streets, which I did. And uh, went back to jail, came back home, went back to jail until uh, a, a good friend of mine, Brother Rollo, came and said, man, look, I need you to be an advocate. And uh, to get the Trinidad uh, neighborhood together. Now, you know what I'm saying, we've been walking these streets, you know, getting this neighborhood together. Uh, we are uh, in War 8 and War 5, you know what I'm saying? So in the, in the War 5 area, it's Trinidad and M Street. Our job is to, man, put 10 toes down, man, and keep the violence down, and basically uh, get the community together with the people the young guys and the older guys. What y'all say? Put the kids up. Yes, Before I get started, I'd like to thank uh, Commander Fitzgerald and I'd like to thank these officers right here, man, to make yes, way for us. Yes, y'all give them a round of applause. Y'all give them a round of applause, man. They really did a good job. Where we need to walk. And I'd like to thank all y'all for coming out. We gotta stop this violence and we gotta keep pushing. We're gonna do a lot of these marches in a lot of these other areas because we care what goes on in the community and we want this violence to stop. So I'd like to give y'all a round of applause for coming out and marching and letting this city know how y'all feel. I wanna give uh, Black and uh, Cody a round of applause for stepping up. Yeah. And uh, it was by any means necessary that they wanted to get this done. Speak by when they did this shit. Hey, hold up, hold up. You crying? Nah, I'm not crying. <laughs> hey, it's cold. Oh, <laughs> hey, but look, 
All right, so now that we had this march, it's not finished. We have to do more. We can't just march and say, put the guns down, pick the kids up, stop the beef, secure the streets, and that's it. We have to stay consistent. We have to be heard all the time. It's not over now that we are finished marching. We have to keep on pushing. We have to help somebody help somebody. That's what I'm saying. And please get our information. We have y'all. You can call us. You can come to the office. And thank y'all from the bottom of our heart on behalf of Knock and Care the Streets. I'm three time pro bowler, NFL coach Josh Craig. I'm a DC native born and raised. Let's put down the guns and stop the violence on behalf of Cure the Streets. Hey, Knock family, what's up, man? Got some new violence on the way, courtesy of Shoe City. Coming to you, man, to pass out in the community when you're doing all that amazing violence interruption you're doing. Much love. And it's just a blessing to know that you haven't forgot where you came from and that you're working to try to make a difference because it's a lot of people that we left behind who also went in at a young age like we did as young adults and who have been in for long periods of time and deserve a second chance and could also contribute to the success of society. They could actually help to transform the justice system and actually help to support other people who are going down the same path that they might have went down or people who are struggling with the same challenges of incarceration and reentry. So I think that IRC has just been, like I said, an exemplary role model for myself and for the staff of the Cure the Streets program for everybody that gets the opportunity to participate in the reentry support groups. I'm just grateful for his commitment to this work because I know that, like I said, a lot of people are not willing to do something different and step outside the box to offer the necessary supports that we need to really make a difference in our community. So we are currently using a database, it's uh, the Calm Care system. Prior to that, we was using Civic Corps. So again, Cure Violence Global is an international program. So everybody that's operating Cure the Streets, or Cure, and we call it Cure the Streets, actually Cure Violence, everybody that's operating it throughout the world, they use the same database and they're tracking the same metrics. How many times are you engaging with high, how often are you engaging with high risk participants? How many events you're having? How many shootings you're having? How many shooting responses you're having? How many medi mediations are you facilitating? Because again, the purpose of the program is to mediate, conf detect and mediate conflicts, to change community norms in situations where violence is, gun violence is seen to be socially acceptable. We wanna change that mindset and to teach and treat those who are at highest risk of being engaged in or involved in or victims of gun violence. And so the way to measure whether or not the program is successful is to track all of your inputs. Again, how many mediations are you facilitating? How many participants do you have? How often are you gauge, engaging with them? Are you reducing their risk level from high risk to medium risk to no risk? And over time, we hope to see a reduction in shootings. And as I said, this program has, is, has been proven to work. It's data-driven and it's a public health approach that allows us to look at gun violence as a disease and treat it as you would any other disease. My name is Treyon White. I serve as the councilman right here in the Great Ward 8 in Washington, D.C. Um, how did Cure the Streets start out? Um, initially, it, it wasn't it wasn't a Cure the Streets in, in D.C. Um, initially, I got together uh, with some community activists, um, some grassroots organizations after the killing of uh, Bundy, uh, Alvin, and we, uh, myself, Tony Lewis, Ronald Moten, and probably about three to four hundred people gathered uh, with Attorney General Carl Racine, Ken McDuffie. Chairman Phil Mendelson, Robert White uh, at Check It um, because of the devastating uh, homicide of, of Bundy. And we said we have to do something. And so we already had an idea of what we wanted to do. I did violence interruption um, work for about six years prior to becoming a council member. And we just knew we had to recruit people from the community that's credible to intervene and de-escalate the violence in our community. We didn't want to rely 
I wanted the police department to be the sole solution to addressing crime in our community. And so I remember I met with King McD Councilman McKay McDuffie, Attorney General Carl Racine, and we found money and put it in the budget. Um, but it simply wasn't enough. And so that's simply how it started. Putting the money in the budget, then hiring, and the whole thing just kind of evolved and to what it is today. Hello, my name is Raven Goodwin. I am a violence interrupter for the World Five Trinidad Brand. Um, I have joined Cure the Streets about a year and a half ago. Um, I wanted to see change into the community. I wanted to see change within myself. I wanted to see growth for the young individuals who are becoming young adults, um, trying to change the mindset of the community to, to be better, to do better, to help one another, to always become a team. Um, you know, trying to stop the violence in the community, um, trying to change the mindset for the young adults. When the shooters and everything was happening, um, people don't see from the outside looking in. We are here to keep the community safe, everyone safe in the community, and thank you. My name is Chris Pugelon. I'm a, a VI worker for Kill the Streets and Wolf out Trinidad area. What drew me to this job because I was once the problem in the neighborhood. Um, I've been back and forth, in and out of jail, and I also just wanted to change the norm in my community. I have two daughters that look up to me, so and they growing up in the Trinidad neighborhood also. So I just want them to see the difference in the community, and I want me to be the face of the community that's changing. Yeah, right there, but uh, now the lady right there is the mailbox. Yeah, so we go there. I told y'all, Curve Global, Curve Streets is 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 is, is, vibe, is global. Man, got my free right here. Program manager, all the way come all the way from Greensboro, North Carolina. Man. She come up here to see the DC team, man. Much love, family everywhere. Adam, look. Uh, my name's P. I'm an outreach worker for. Not to the streets. Um, I've been with the program for over, a little over a year now. I'm an outreach worker, and basically what I do is I find high-risk individuals who have either been a victim of gun violence or are known to carry guns, and we try to like stop the problem before it happens. Um, I was a teen, had a troubled childhood, always in troubles and I'm like very credible in the neighborhood so I really like bond with the people in the neighborhood to get the information that helps us like stop the gun battle. Pretty much I mean I love my job like I love helping people. I like giving back so I think this job was perfect for me so when I had the opportunity I jumped at it. My name is Kurt. Part of uh, not to the street. And how, how, how I come about uh, get myself involved with the community uh, with Kill the Street is because somebody had grabbed me and pulled me in and felt though I would, I, I'd be a big effect on the community father in a positive way of trying to make young, our young generation uh, according to uh, obeying the law and things of that nature. Also, it, it, it's making me a better person from where I came from. I know, and uh, as time goes by, you're never too old to learn. So I'm still in progress of bettering myself too as, 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 as things go on. So uh, at this time, uh, me dealing with the community is very important. Me getting familiar with people in my community is very important. 
and, uh, and talking to them and, 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 and learning from Kill the Streets, the information that I'm getting from Knox and from Murder Free DC and, and, and all the other organizations. That are, uh, they're making me a better person today. For me, like that's a challenge with me because us trying to uh, to gain the trust for the young, uh, the young society and people out here that's committing crime. That's a challenge for me. So you know what I mean. Me coming up with a strategy, learn how to talk and learn how to uh, act in cahoots and make them believe that they can trust me and know that I have their back. That's a that's a hell of a challenge too. But uh, like I said, man. Uh, a violent interrupter is something that's to try to mediate situations before it escalate. You know, and um, the things in that nigga. So right now, like I said, I'm still learning. Uh, I'm a hell of a role model. It, uh, it could be, I don't care, I could be talking to 20 people. Out of that 20, no two make a right decision to change their life over it. I did a good job. So that's where I'm at. What's up, y'all? This your boy Anwan Big G Glove in the backyard band, man, right here live on the south side. And I just wanted to touch in with the Cure the Street situation, right? The impact I seen them brothers do, right there, being as though my auntie lives in Trinidad, with the young is just like mesmerizing. They pull to them like a magnet. They talking to them and they changing their life and everyday steps. Not just telling them to put the guns down, but like getting their ID situated. GED. Getting yourself together, like just being on the block all the day. You know what I mean? Just worrying about how you can get to the next level. Filling out applications like them brothers is hands on. A lot of them youngest don't really have nowhere to go. Be hungry, they can go to the big homies and talk to them. Like I look at how Cody was talking to the kids, Black, Rallo, and really seeing the impact that they put with them youngest and them youngest really going to them when they got a problem. In their household, outside the household, the whole nine yards. So when they called me this summer and we did that peace walk when them youngest was around there shooting, man, and when they had it on the news, I seen how they was sitting down Indian style with them youngest telling them right there, if you need anything, come right there. And a lot of them be lost. Pick the kids up. Put the guns down. Pick the kids up. Don't trip away, man. Do something. Don't just stand there. Do something. Put the guns down. happening in your neighborhood say something pull them in pull them in i'm not talking about i'm saying pull them in close go find one of these guys right here one of these girls right here and pull them in and try to give them some help show them a different way to change the culture it's family out here we all know each other we all love each other the second thing i think that we as a community can do more. And I think that uh, National Association for the Advancement of Returning Citizens uh, with the CURE model is a small piece to a, a bigger piece that we can do to ensure public safety, right? Because I believe that bad things happen when good people do nothing. And there are a lot of good people in our community and we allow a small segment of the population to inflict violence and fear on our community. And so when we stand up, it encourages other people to stand up, but I think that's what knock and body um, and recruiting people who have had brushes with the law that uh, at one point in their lives tear down the community. Now using the, the gifts and talents that God gave them to uplift and build up the community. Um, because I remember when we first started talking about uh, funding the community to take care of the community, the narrative in the paper, the Washington Post was that DC is trying to fund ex-cons to not commit crimes. And so it didn't get funded. And so we fought and fought and fought with the power of the people. We got it funded um, to over 10 million. But even that is a drop in the bucket when we talk about a $16.7 billion budget. When we talk about uh, in the last uh, three weeks, five females got killed. We talk about tonight, I have to go to a, a, a visual of a one-year-old who got killed a few days ago. When we talk about Devon McNeil and so many others, Micaiah, uh, that got killed in our city, um, it's, it's just escalating. So we have to do more. And Cure the Street is, is one part of the overall solution to addressing the behavioral health issues, 
the substance abuse issues, the mental health abuse, the homelessness, the helplessness, the lack of educational resources and the joblessness in our community and the housing inequity. So it's, it's a system that we have to create within D.C. and we're just getting that work started. And so we're not where we need to be, but we're making progress right here in our city and cure the streets in conjunction with NOC and other organizations that are doing this work like J&J, &J, um, Alliance of Concerned Men, Love More. There are a lot of good partners in the community that's doing great work that we're all collaborating to try to end gun violence here in Washington, D.C. Care the Streets is a model that we use in certain parts of the district and certain parts of Ward 8. But we want to encourage everyone to join, even if you're not a violence interrupter or a credible messenger. Guess what? You are a violence interrupter and a credible messenger, uh, especially for my young people. Because the greatest influence on a young person is another young person. And so we always encourage the young. If you know your friend about to trip out and do something crazy, it's on you to stop them. It's on you to say something. It's on you to intervene. Because by the time it gets to an adult or somebody who has influence, it may be too late. Because when you don't act and do something, then you're equally as responsible. And so we all have a role to play. And no uh, the council member, the mayor, is no role is bigger than the next person. Because we all have influence on somebody. And sometimes it's the person that's on the ground in the trenches in the community, like the violence interrupters, that may know about it and intervene before it escalates. So one of the things I heard... A uh, madman man say from 640, who was a violence director, he says it's hard to document a homicide that didn't happen. And that's the work these violence interrupters are doing on a daily basis, intervening and redirecting and encouraging and re-educating. So again, Cure the Streets is a public health approach to gun violence prevention. It is a proven, data-driven model, and I'm just so grateful that Irk Weaver was willing to take a chance on this program. It gave us an opportunity to employ people from high-risk neighborhoods who have key relationships with high-risk individuals who are engaging in gun violence, and some of these individuals may not otherwise be employable. 
because some of their lived experience and their skill set doesn't necessarily match the marketable jobs that we see in the community. So we have over 60, 60 staff. And as I said, ERC employs three of those uh, of those six sites. So about half of those individuals work for not Cure the Streets. And ERC is just an exemplary role model for myself as a returning citizen. And I think for a lot of the employees, because he is formerly incarcerated, because of his lived experience and his personal background, and he's just a, a person that a lot of people in the community really look up to. He's just a connector. Um, a lot of people, Look, look up to him for his calmness, for his uh, ability to get along with everybody despite politics and other differences. And um, uh, one other thing I want to make sure that I talk about is the support group that he started about two, maybe three years ago. Uh, obviously, at first, it was an in-person support group where returning citizens and their family members could come out and sit in circle and talk about the challenges that they experienced with reentry. And so once COVID hit, instead of discontinuing those support groups, he actually took those support groups to Zoom. And now he's offering that on through a virtual platform and even offering it more consistently than he was before. And so I'm just grateful for his creativity and his commitment to supporting people who are directly impacted by violence and criminal justice. Any questions? It's all we had had nothing to do. No clothes, no shoes on their back. Not only was they telling them to put the guns down, they were showing them life skills as well. As well. So I really like watched the program grow with Cure the Streets and really watch how they was really like real big brother figures to them guys. It hit me right in the heart just to see those youngers coming up to the bigger guys in the program. Like, man, you know what I mean? Appreciate everything y'all are doing. And I just watch, because I'm always a big observer. And I watch, and I watch, and I saw that. Like when I said when Cody was out there talking to the youngers and I saw him sitting out there getting out food, you know what I mean, school supplies, and really talking to them, not just saying, hey, yeah, go ahead about your way really having long, long conversations with them. And that sinks in. It sinks in the mind and in the heart. On the behalf of Cure the Streets, I want to just say, man, just keep going because y'all changing the life of a lot of these young brothers and sisters in that community of Trinidad. And I commend you guys. I want you to keep pushing no matter what the trials and tribulations are. I want you guys to keep pushing, man. And with the whole city behind you 100%. Like, I also grew up in Ward 8, and I ended up in prison for a violent crime. I spent 18 years in prison, and so once I was released, I got an opportunity to work in reentry, work on prison conditions, and now to work in restorative justice and gun violence prevention. And I know for me, it's been like a saving grace, like an opportunity for me to right my wrongs, to make atonement where and make reparations where they are due to try to like you know make my good deeds outweigh my bad deeds and i i know probably like myself Irk probably don't don't think about you know what he means to other people he probably just doing what he doing because again trying to right your wrongs trying to please the law trying to get things right before that great and lawful day of judgment but i also think that it's important that we let people know that they have shown us the possibilities, that they are great role models and that they are remarkable and we should honor them because when you honor man, you honor Allah. You know, what you do for man, you do for Allah. So grateful for this opportunity to get to talk to you because Irk has been, he has basically paved the way and helped to create a movement around reentry and gun violence prevention and creating opportunities for other people just like us to get involved in this work because as they say, it's becoming very popular saying now, those who are closest to the problem are closest to the solution, but often furthest away from the resources. And so he has helped us to fix that 